Hello students! How are you? I hope you're all doing great. This is Teacher Yan and welcome back to our science class. Okay, so for today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the energy flow in the environment. Okay, the energy flow in the environment. You can find that on page 34 of your science book. So before we proceed, let's learn some vocabularies for you to better understand our topic. So let's start with energy. Energy. Energy is the ability to do work. It is how things change and move. That is energy. Now, the next word is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So, this is the process in which green plants use sunlight to make their own food. We also have consumers. Consumers. Consumers are living things that must eat other organisms to obtain energy necessary for life. And we also have producers. Producers. Producers are living things that can make their own food using air, light, soil, and water. Only plants can produce their own food. So, let's go back to our lesson. Sunlight is a source of light energy and heat energy. Plants use light energy to make food during photosynthesis. This food is then used as energy by other living things. So, energy moves from one living thing to another as a chain. We call this chain as food chain. Okay, so what is food chain again? It is when organisms eat other organisms in order to live and get energy. Now, how does the relationship of living things as food source looks like? A food chain starts from plants that get light energy from the sun and it use it to make their own food. Now, they keep this food as starch in different parts of their body. On the other hand, animals cannot make their own food, so they have to eat plants or other animals to get energy for their living. Now, living things in a food chain have different roles as follows. Let's start with producers. Producers are living things that make their own food through photosynthesis, and it keep it as starch. They are plants and algae. Okay, so we also have consumers. Consumers are living things that do not make their own food. They live by eating other living things. Now, we have cows for example. So there are three kinds of consumers. We have the herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. So first, what are herbivores? Herbivores are animals that eat plants only. Like for example, we have elephants, horses, cows, caterpillars, rabbits, and small fishes. So they eat only plants, while carnivores are animals that only eat other animals. Examples of carnivores are tigers, crocodiles, falcons, foxes, lions, snakes, and frogs. So they only eat other animals. We also have omnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and other animals. So omnivores includes cats, turtles, chickens, monkeys, dogs, rats, and even us humans. Okay? In addition, some food chains also have some living things that eat dead plants and animals. These living things are called scavengers. Okay, so what are scavengers again? These are living things that eat dead plants and animals, just like the earthworm, millipede, vulture, and termites. So these are called scavengers. 
In habitat, there is another kind of living things that eat dead plants and animals by breaking them down. They are called decomposers. They are called decomposers. Examples are mushrooms. Now, to draw a food chain, we start from the producer, then the primary consumer, to the secondary consumer, to the tertiary consumer, until we get to the top consumer. Now, let's have an example. We see that the plant uses light energy from the sun to make food. A worm eats leaves from the plant. A bird eats the worm. A snake eats the bird. And finally, a falcon eats the snake. And then we use an arrow to show the direction where energy moves from one living thing to another. The arrow head always points at the consumer. So there, every food chain starts from a producer. The energy moves from a producer to consumers in a fixed way. Okay. In nature, food chains are big and have many parts. One producer is food for many kinds of consumers. A big and mixed food chain with every plant and animal from a habitat is called food web. Okay, so again, food web is a group of food chains within a habitat. Most living things eat more than one type of animal or plant. Let's have this as an example. This is a group of living things in one habitat. So we have plants. The plant is eaten by the bee and the butterfly. Okay, the bee is also eaten by the hill mina, who is eaten by the falcon. Okay, so that is already one food chain. Now, let's find another food chain. So we have the carrots. The carrots are eaten by the caterpillar who is eaten by the white vented mina, which is eaten by the falcon. So that is another food chain. And we also have another one using the weeds. The weeds are eaten by the rabbit. The rabbit is eaten by the falcon. That is another food chain. If it doesn't end there, we still have the rabbit can be eaten by the fox as well. We still have one producer, which is the rice plant. Now, the rice plant is eaten by the magpie, which is a kind of a bird. And the magpie is again eaten by the falcon. Is The rice plant is eaten by the rat, who is eaten by fox. Now, the cat can also be eaten by the owl. So you see that uh, this example of food web is a group of food chain. They are interconnected. They are interconnected. Okay, so food web are more realistic than food chains for showing how consumers and producers are interconnected in nature. Okay, so let's compare what is food chain and what is food web. So again, food chain is the flow of energy between organisms who eat each other, while food web is a group of food chains within habitat. So that is the end of our discussion. So for your activity, you can open your science book to page 4 to 1 and you can see there this activity. So the direction says, find out about a community living in one habitat. Draw the relationship in the form of a food chain. So here you are going to draw example of a food chain. For example, you can draw a plant as a producer which gets its energy from the sun. Now, the plants are eaten by grasshopper. The grasshopper is eaten by frog and the frog is eaten by a snake. And then after that, you draw an arrow to show the directions. Okay, so this is just an example. You make your own example, okay? For the second one, fill in the blanks using the given words. So you have here, 
frog, snake, grasshopper, rat, rice, and falcon. So you are just going to write these words on these blanks. Let's try to do this all together. So for number one, blank is eaten by rat and rat is eaten by falcon. What do you think is the producer for number one? Is it frog, snake, grasshopper, rat, rice, or falcon? If your answer is rice, then you are correct. Okay, so you write here rice. So rice is the producer. For number two, you have to write two answers here. So what is the producer and what is the consumer? Okay, so for number two, number three, number four, and number five, you can do this on your own. You take your time answering this one. Okay, so always remember that a plant is always the producer in a food chain. For your homework, you can open your book to page 42. You can find your assignment or your homework on page 42 of your science book. Okay, so... You can see here the direction says draw the food chains that are found in this food web and answer the following questions so as you can see this is an example of a food web right they are interconnected or they are a group of food chain now what you're going to do is to draw two food chains over here okay i'll give one food chain for example the plant is eaten by the worm the worm is eaten by spider, then the spider is eaten by the bird. You can draw it right here, okay? And then you have to think of one more food chain. So that is the first part. Then after that, you have to answer these following questions as well. Okay, number one question says, Why do food chains and food web start from plants? Because... Plants can make their own blank because plants can make their own blank. You can continue that one. Okay, so for number two, how do predators in food chains and food web help balance the ecosystem? How do predators in food chains and food web help balance the ecosystem? What are predators again? These are the animals that eat other animals for food. So we can consider them as carnivores and omnivores. They eat other animals for food. Okay? So how do they control the number of herbivores in the ecosystem? How do they control the number of herbivores in the ecosystem? You can write down your answers here. And then for number three, are decomposers important for the ecosystem? Explain. Are decomposers important for the ecosystem? If your answer is yes, explain your answer. If your answer is no, then explain your answer and write it over here. So that's the end of our discussion. Once again, this is Teacher Yan reminding you to always keep safe. Thank you and goodbye.